tonight on the round eight episode of the AFL Armchair Advisors. Our special guests include Adrian Brody, Canadian diver Richard Funk, Bonesaw McGraw, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. and special musical interlude by Bangs performing his hit song, <laughs> Take You to the Movies. Oh, hell yeah. Boys, 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 if you are not frothing directly out of the end of your meat handle right now, then there is something drastically wrong with you. I am Rich of the AFL Armchair Advisors. Back in the studio, round eight, AFL season 2022. Joining me is, of course, Dan. He's the man with the stats, the calculators, all the money in the world. You know who it is. Dan, how are you? Mate, I'm absolutely psyched after that intro. I'm not going <laughs> to yeah. lie. One mention of the word bangs and my heart skips a beat. I'm, I'm ready to go. I am ready. LFG. LFG. And speaking of meat handles and big bananas, it is the man who dresses like he means it every week, week in, week out. It is our global field correspondent, Desmond Van Bus, back from the jungles of the Sudan. How are you, Des? I'm a bit mellow. I'm just kidding, baby. I'm ready for this pod. Chick Ha ha. Let's go. I am so excited for this scramble now. You've just gone all you've just gone all silly on me. Yeah, and yeah, now it's yeah. time for me to be a silly sausage yep. in about T minus 40 minutes. <laughs> get excited, get excited. New and returning visitors to our shores. We'll be guiding you through all nine games of AFL season 2022, round eight. Some absolutely corking games on the slate this week, boys. We'll be discussing them, telling all you tipsters who you should be tipping, all the spuds you should be avoiding and leaving out in the paddock. And for the punters amongst thou, we're going to give you a few tasty little bets, legs, treats to throw into your multis and your betting slips. We're going to make you some money. We're going to have fun along the way. Oh, boys. LFG. Amped. Amped. LFG. Amped. Absolutely. Amped. Absolutely. That's one of the best intros in a long time. I'm really happy with that. <laughs> Mate, Bonesaw is ready. <laughs> Bonesaw <laughs> is ready. <laughs> oh, Lord above. All right, let's kick into it, fellas. Absolutely barnstorming Friday night game ahead for us at the Adelaide Oval. It is the Port Adelaide Power, victorious in their last two. Seeing the Western Bulldogs, who have just come back from a lovely little win of their own. Sensible Dan, take her away. Uh, look, I'm not going to delve too much into what Port did on the weekend, because that was genuinely... The worst game of football I've ever watched. I don't know if either of you saw it because I know you were out and about on the town. Did you catch any of it? Uh, n- no, I was I, uh, I was busy catching chlamydia from uh, Crybaby. Mm. Nice, yeah, yeah, nice. yeah. I actually watched the third. Look, w- I, weird, but I watched the third quarter. How? In, when? in, 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 cry, in Crybaby. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. On had KO a, the next day. But. I was going to say, just had a girl, just like booty, just grinding in his face. And he's like, well, no, Robbie Gray's going to kick this. Uh, look, guaranteed, <laughs> cl- chlamydia. Much more enjoyable. Much more enjoyable. It was horrific. They uh, they played up at Kazali's, which obviously is not uh, the best at this time of year for playing mm. any form of, of outdoor sport. Mm. But they also decided to play a game on the oval beforehand. So <laughs> it literally yeah. looks like a country footy oval yeah, good. after the third uh, third game of the day. Mm. It was horrible. Yeah. I, I just felt, I felt bad for both teams. It looked like my uh, rear end after any sort of uh, Indian delight. At a traditional Indian restaurant. Just an absolute wreckage. Uh, <laughs> Ollie Wine said after the game, and he's been in the league, what, seven years now? Six, seven years? Somewhere, somewhere years. in that uh, hardest game he's ever played, he reckons. Mm. It was horrible. Slight. So, look, if nothing else, absolutely gutsy to scrap out a win in that, in that, uh, that those kind of conditions. Um, the Dogs, on the other hand, just beat up on another limp team. Just went to town. And... I still don't know whether they're actually any good or not. Mm, they, well. they, they, they seem to really enjoy playing these piss weak baby teams and then they come up against some formidable opposition and they don't know what to do. Forget how to play footy. I was thinking that. I've not been impressed by any of the Dogs' wins this season whatsoever. Beat no one of note, done nothing impressive. The games that they have won, they've blasted their, their piss baby opponents out of the water. Mm-hmm. Do, do something. Mm-hmm. Do something impressive. Yep. Beat, a, beat a top eight team for once. Nah. Yep. <clears throat> no I mean, English. I mean, look, that game should have been... They should have blown the bombers out, really, and they just couldn't do it. They just. No. I think they won the inside 50 count by about... 35, give or take? Yeah. Why are you not demolishing them? 100 points why, why, ahead. why is it 30 points? It's, you know, I, as you rightly said, just not that impressed by them at the moment. Well, this this week, I think, will be a lot closer to that port game in terms of result. Look, no English, no Keith for the dogs. Norton pulled I, up properly. I, I reckon English will play. They're, they're, they're wanting back. They need to get some some level of, of form back, I think. Well, we know what happens when you rush back blokes. We, do. we, we don't like it. What do you reckon, Des? This is like, when you look at this, and you, we had in our top four at the beginning of the season, you had obviously these two teams and Brisbane 
with Melbourne. Is that is that a fair shout? No. So these two, yeah, this is Port basically... was probably like sort of. But they finished yeah, top but, last year, so they yeah. were, I know they had a, had a bit of a burner mm-hmm. in this exact moment. But you look and go, this is like the under underperforming cup of the year, mm. cup of the year, cup of the round. Like it's just two two teams that you look and go, they should be good. If you could throw but GWS and make this a triple threat match, that yeah. would be unbelievable. I'd love <laughs> to watch that if there was a ladders involved. But uh, <laughs> I'm going to jump into the prediction. Go. I think the doggies are going to do it. I'm going to tip the dogs here because I'm not sold on Port because I'm just they they beat West Coast. They beat up on West Coast, which everyone could honestly a team of senile seventy year old male or females nope. could do it. Anyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, actually think, I actually think some of the AFL women's non-binaries? team could uh, could roll to the West Coast. Out of my own. <laughs> yeah, all, 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 all the belts. <laughs> I, I, uh... all, the, all the GTs could do it. Um, <laughs> that's just the end. That's just my acronym of it. But yeah. I, uh, I'm going to agree with Des. I'm going to tip the dogs here. It's just yeah. I, I, it, even though I'm not that impressed, I just believe in them more than I do Port at the moment. I agree with you and I agree with you. A few things that I heard recently, um, Port coaches, Brett Montgomery, and then uh, Jonas himself said in the media, the scars are still lingering from last year. Now, what was the last game they played last year? It was a prelim, Adelaide Oval against the Dogs. So it's the Battle Scars game of the round. It's the Battle Scars game of the round. Guy Sebastian's frothing. (laughs) You know me, I've always said about Port Adelaide, their biggest weakness is 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 their mental side. It's their mindset. So if they go into this and they get even slightly down and the run of play starts going against them, oh, no, it's just like the prelim, just like mm-hmm, last year. Mm-hmm. The heads will drop, and it's only going to take that one. Dogs can d- dogs can and still could get a run on yet in this game and this season. And and I, as, as you said, I trust the dogs just a bit more than I trust Port at the minute, so I'm going uh, the doggies. One to three it's nine. a case of there's that much talent there. At some point, it will out. It's got to, it's got to go bang. It's got to go bang. What do you got for bets? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, bets. Oh, uh, now I've got some sensible-ish kind of multis and legs and such, but yep. I'm going to end the game. I'm sorry, I'm going to end the round with an absolute bertha, absolute bertha. So okay. get keen for that. For Port Adelaide Wait. Western Bulldogs, though, absolutely money. Uh, Robbie Gray, hero from last week, plays on confidence. He he he, go, he peaks and troughs, you know, and I think he's in a peak right now. So mm-hmm. I'm going to back him in for an anytime goal. The Bont, mm-hmm. yet another goal last week. I like that. He'll have another one. Thank mm-hmm. you. Uh, Dan Houston, 20 plus. Yep. Is that one? Been uh, reading my notes, yep. You are, I have indeed. Uh, do you have Connor Rosie, 20 plus on there? I don't, but I should, but I don't. The last two weeks he's been in the centre. Mm-hmm. The last two, sorry, the last three weeks he's been in the centre. Yeah. The last three weeks he's had plus 20 disposals. Mm-hmm. Good enough for me. Bailey Dale, Josh Dunkley, 25 disposals apiece, and all up that's paying in the vicinity of $6. Nice. The only one I had to add to that was Darcy Byrne Jones for 20 plus disposals. He's done it in his last three. I like him to just kick on with that. So I, I, I could imagine this being a very high possession, low scoring football game. Play between the arcs. Yep. Could be a bit of that. All right, let us roll on. Wait, did you have did you have anything? Sorry for being disrespectful. Dogs. Yeah. Dollar eighty. Dollar eighty. Dog, dogs head to head. Dollar eighty. Like they're paying. I wouldn't bet on it, but I'm tipping, <laughs> I'm tipping them. <laughs> he wouldn't, but you can. Good sure. tip, though. Yeah, yeah nice. Uh, there's actually two Friday night games this week, boys. And only one of them is worth watching, and it ain't this one. Do you know what? Was well, there a, a VFL game? Fan, yeah. are, if you're a Freo <laughs> fan, you'd want to watch it. Yeah, I would have thought. And if Porter, Even, and if Porter uh, smashing the dogs, I'll switch over to this game. So I, I'll watch. I'd rather watch a mauling than a Port win. And by this game, he means the Fremantle Dockers, who are hosting the North Melbourne Kangaroos at Optus Stadium, eight ten pm Australian Central Standard Time. I think I said Optus. It's in Perth. Mm-hmm. Des, continue on with your vein of thought, there, fella. It's time for the uh, DD OTW. <laughs> nah, it's not actually the Des Dog of the Week. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Good we grief. can run through this really, really quickly. I thought. Frio, rolled over the Cats. Very, very nice. I like to see it. I didn't personally tip him, but I do like to see it. It was we, a little bit of a heart. We all believers now? Yeah, yeah. I am. you got to be. I am, and I'm, and I'm really happy about it. Really, really happy compared to how they looked against Adelaide in round one. They have picked it up. Mm. Even against Carlton, uh, Carlton, St. Kilda in round two, they looked a little bit shaky. Mm-hmm. But they said that they, they Since got, then, all the, got all the a little jiggle, a little ironed it out, shake the sillies and, out, and, mate, and, and, they, the and sillies. they've started having the the problems that West Coast had. They've had a few COVIDs, they've had a few injuries. It's not derailing the gravy train. There is no way they lose this game. I'm like, and and if they lose this game, then I'm going to look very very silly. But the chances are so low. What what what, what can we put on the line? If North Melbourne win this, what what can I do that would be? You may as well say anything. You you may as well say. I'm sh- Get breasts whacked on you and live as Desmina for the rest of your life. It doesn't matter. You could you could come up with anything you want to. It's just it's just not going to happen. And that sums up this game. If that there does happen, I'll fund it. <laughs> I'll film it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think it'd be fun having a 
bits and jugs. <laughs> <laughs> you can think about that whilst you're doing that. Dan, I'm just going to say a few quick things on this. Yep. The Dockers right now are as good as we've ever seen them. Yep. The Kangaroos right now are as bad as we've ever seen them. What more do you need to know? No, it's, and in, it's in Optus. It's in Perth. No, it's, nothing. It's, it's in Perth. Correct. Fremantle, 40 Correct. plus. Done. The, the only, there was two things I liked out of that game from the Roos on the weekend. Mm-hmm. The first one was they didn't give up till the final siren. They, kept, they kept playing footy. And, and, they, that, and that, that, that finished? That, that, yeah, <laughs> that, was a, that was a very, very good part of my Saturday. When it was over. Yes. Yeah, uh, and uh, a bit of fight from Jason Horn Francis. Mm. He was getting stuck into every man and his dog. He'd had enough. Oh, Jiffy. Jiffy Francis. Did you see any of this, Des? Uh, someone clouded Taron Thomas, and a few of the, the Roos boys walked over and did nothing. Not Jason Horn Francis. He was right in there, shirt front and blokes, shirt in front and three at once. He just had enough. He'd, he'd, he'd absolutely lost it by this point. That's uh, the Fabian Francis. It, that, it, that's, it, that's, uh, that's that mentorship coming it, it, out. It was good. And then uh, okay. J- Jack Silvani got the ball, la- laid off a, a, a kick. Jason Horn Francis comes in from behind. Gives him one to go on with. Yeah, good. And then they both start shirt fronting each other. Yeah. Jack Silvani's given it the big and your team's shit, blah, blah, blah. Jason Hall Francis was just, he just was not interested. <laughs> he was tunnel vision, mate. Yeah, he was, yeah. And it was fantastic. I, honest to God, love to see that from an 18 year old kid. If no one else is going to stand up, why not him? Go ahead. Other than that, they're going to get absolutely pulverized in this game. <laughs> and I, I, hope, I hope Horn Francis goes nuts again. Yeah. Start, start, if you're going to lose, just start laying the smack down. Well, we should get into. Uh, get I reckon into that's us. what got him the, the rising star. I would have thought, yeah, a bit of, bit of, <laughs> tw- bit of aggro. Tw- tw- Twenty nondescript disposals and a couple of cheap shots. Perfect game. And a couple footy. of uppercuts, mate. Yeah. Well, we should uh, get in touch with sports, but you know how they say you can bring your own, uh, bring your own multi yeah. or whatever else. What could we put Horny down for? Um, Two uh, oh, oh, <laughs> over under five DDTs. Uh, yeah, sure. It was good. A couple of Batista bombs. Well, like I said, I really liked it. Four camel clutches, mate. It was it, it was worth sitting there and wasting an entire three hours worth of footy watching just to see that. Look, okay. So in all seriousness, now, yeah. Uh, so now I was having a look at team sheets that come out just beforehand, yep. and I was interested. Lob very potentially out. Mm-hmm. Blake Akers, who had one of the best games of his career last week, very potentially out. Travis Collier. That might be Longmuir's finest job so far, is getting the best out of him. I would have thought so, yeah. I would have thought. Um, Travis Collier as well. You know, just a, just another little, not a, a massive name outside of the Fremantle four walls, but still a, a bit part player who does his role. Sean Darcy still out. Hayden Young, Chapman, eligible to return. They'll play. Tests, you would have thought. Do any of these outs give North a sniff? No. Okay. Well, that was just Dar- a Darcy's. Point. Darcy's never there anyway. So that's I hate to say it, but like pointless. Lob Lob is an impact player that when he's there, Freo run real well, real well. But when he's gone, they also run like real well. They just don't win by as much. So what you're saying is they they run real, real well, real well. This, right, to, real without well. Lob, th- to me, this is just a perfect week for those outs. That's a bit of a. Oh, Dockers, so per- perfect week for All right, bets. Um, let's get through it. Dockers 40 plus. I've got Brayshaw 30 plus disposals, $1.88. Rude. Simp 25 Light plus. 80. Hasn't done it the last two weeks, but at some point he'll. That nerved me up a bit. Yeah. Nah, $1.57. Uh, Monday 20 plus. Evergreen will just get it done. And Hayden Young for 20 plus on his re entry to the lineup, $1.79. Don't mind that at all from you. Do not mind that at all from you. Uh, now, look, if Blake Akers is playing, put him down for 20. He won't. If he's playing... He won't. He's in isolation. It's believed to be in isolation. So he won't I don't know play. what that means. Man, man may have not uh, Seven days registered. out. You've got play. North Korean Mantle over there who don't want to tell us anything about anything. They're just like, oh, maybe... North Korean Mantle. They don't, they don't need to tell you. He's set, mandatory. Seven days. Will not play. If he's playing, put him down for 20. Uh, Bray Short. Next week, absolutely. If he's playing then, or this week, or then, or especially on Friday night, put him down for 20. Bray Short, 25 disposals. Thank you. Uh, David Munfoss, as you said, 20. I love it. I love it. I love it. Lockie Schultz, two goals, please. He had four last time that these uh, these teams played each other. He had two last week. And also, uh, the human gritty, Michael Frederick, put him down for two this week oh. as well. Two goals? Yeah, isn't, I reckon. Isn't he exciting? Absolutely. He is, yeah. He makes me sweaty. Uh, I wonder why. <laughs> uh, Mary Gridmas is what I'm expecting <laughs> from uh, Michael Frederick. Now, nah, look, if they've got a few outs in that forward line, someone's going to have to stand up and kick goals. Matty Tabin is still not back yet. Big Fredders, why not? Correct. Why not him? Why not him? Why not him? Let's roll on to an actually interesting game now. We've got Saturday afternoon at the G Boys. It's the Richmond Tigers taking on the Collingwood Magpies. Beautiful. Now, fellas. you got something to say. Just say it. Here it is. It is the dog. The (laughs) Des Dog of the Week, baby. Pies are going to do it. They're going to go, hey, Richmond. Guess what, mate? You are old news. Pies, Jack Ginnivan (laughs) says, bang. Jack Ginnivan, five goals. Back him in. 
Have you ever seen a, a seven game player or however many games get this much of a build up? Like, no. Every single media article you see about him, Collingwood superstar Jack Jack Ginevan. Love it. Great player. Great. He's transcended. Forward. He's transcended. How, how do you how already. do you get to this level of already. superstardom in this shorter time frame? Big cojones but, and be, Kane Corns has helped him a lot. With yeah, that. but be four years old. He saw Kane Corns die there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. See, there you go. Be Kane Corns. So, so Never B- heard amazing. of purple shampoo. So be four years old. Um, tell Kane Corns to get fucked. Turn him into a fanboy. Mm-hmm. Make sure, it, sure make sure. him dye his hair to suit you. Mm-hmm. Uh, sh- shush fat Essendon fans who are telling you to get fucked. Mm-hmm. Um, go out for beers. Yes. Uh, on Anzac Day. Yes. After you won the medal. Yeah. That's how you do it. Which you got reprimanded for. I hate that. Oh, yeah. Just doing it for himself and the diggers. Yeah, you got rep- <laughs> Now, Jack, you weren't getting drunk, were you? Shut up, Pendlebury. How about that one? Okay, well, Where's yours? Where's yours? Yeah, watch yeah. this. Watch, watch <laughs> yeah. this week. Pendlebury comes out with peroxide blonde hair as well. <laughs> now, Jack, you weren't having beers, and then Ginnivan's there. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, uh, I love it. Because if you watch the Pies and Suns game, I was backing in the Suns, and I was uh, a bit disappointed watching it. But mm. every time the Suns had an answer, and Suns kicked quite straight as well, so they were lucky with their efficiency. But every time the Suns gave Collingwood an answer, Collingwood would fire back. Mm-hmm. So you'd look and go, oh, it's getting close here. 11 points, 12 points, two goals in it. And then you watch and you, you have a look and go, Four or five what goals, happened there? Yeah. Yeah. Far out, they're 32 points up and the yeah. Pies just always fired back. And I think that's what they're going to do this week. And they're going to fire back better. They're hungrier. They want it more. What do you boys think? I think you're on crack. Um, this tip hinges a bit on Dusty being back. Yep. If Dusty's back, you're right, if Dusty's back, they're going to get 90,000 to the G, right? The Tiger Army will be out in force because it's the old rivals. Yellow and black, right? baby. It will be. Richmond are going to ride that emotional wave and until the cows come home. Mm-hmm. Add in, Cochin's back. Go Pies. Tarrant's back, down back. Mm-hmm. All right? Now they, they, found, they found an unbelievably good midfielder sitting in their back line in Jaden Shaw. Yes, That's thank true. you. Going through the middle. He's, just by the way, stats, stats, stats. He's almost had... A thousand more meters gained than any other player in the comp this year. Good enough. Every time he gets it, straight forward and bomb as long as you possibly can. Oh, a thousand meters. The human greyhound. I just love it. The human greyhound. A whole K. Yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. Like Bailey Dale was second. Bailey Dale loves to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Not even the same hemisphere. Short yeah. just loves it. Daylight. Yep. Yeah. yeah, no, it is. So there's, yeah, as you said, short going through the midfield, but you've got Cochin back, Tarrant back, Pickett back. Beautiful. The Presti can afford to go and have a spell. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Uh, and then Dusty, as I said. Dusty back. That's that's it. Massive game. Is he hundred percent back though? He if they they will. It's they it, will, it's they will, as, they it's as good out. as yeah. it, it's as good as a sign seal delivered, mate. I would have thought. I would have thought. So oh. R- Richmond all the way. Oh Come, yeah, emotional. Oh, oh. So it's two superstars up against each other, battling plus, heads for plus, the first time. Ginevan and uh, Dusty. <laughs> Jesus. So, yeah, du- well, so, Dust, so Dusty will come out with bleach blonde peroxide mohawk. <laughs> if he does that, we got a wig on. He's a fan as well. If he does that, I'll change my tip. Aiden Beg rucking against Toby Nan Curvis. It's Richmond all Actually, the way. Darcy Cameron was good in the ruck. I'll, I'll give him that. Yeah, yeah. Better than ja- 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 Jared Witts is probably the, just if you uh, take out Max Gorn, Jared Witts is probably the best ruckman in the league this year so far. He's around English says good, eh? He's almost had 40 more hitouts than any other ruckman. Yeah, it's because English has been out for two games. No, English is, does not get hit out. English sluts around the ground and, ground and gets touches. Great oh, for fantasy. It. it is. Great for fantasy. Yeah, I'm, I'm really liking the Tigers in this game. I thought the Pies defense was just leaky again. They got towed up by... An ancient Levi Casbolt and mm. Chol, which is you know we all love Chol, but they just got towed up by them. Imagine what two was two proper was also forwards exciting. in Lynch and Rewalt can do. And Martin at, at half forward. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, Tigers, Mum. Tigers are back. Just give me your money. Tigers now, are back. Gentlemen. <laughs> fair, fair though. Bets, Dan. Yep. <clears throat> I've got a, uh, Jason Castagna for a goal. Good. He always loves to get in the uh, in the scorers column. So. Jason Castagna for one dollar fifty four. Camden McIntosh for fifteen plus. Bit of a curly it's one, just but a weird name, hey. It, it is. It's just an unusual name. Like you hear it, and it just doesn't roll off the tongue like a name should. I agree, I, and I, it's I, the spelling I, annoys me. Yeah, absolutely. But <laughs> yeah. look, I'll take him for fifteen plus. I don't care. Yeah. His name's money's money. Dollar fifty. Nick Vloston for twenty plus. That is still paying a dollar forty one, and he's having like twenty six every week. Rude. Easy value. Cleaner. Rude. Stop, di- Vacky. stop disrespecting Vacky him. And Jaden Short for twenty five plus because. Even if Dusty's back, he's going to be sitting forward for a lot of the game. He's not going straight back into that midfield, and that is Jaden Short's domain. $25 plus, $1.36. Not too bad. I had some pretty similar stuff. I saw... Aiden um, Begg for four goals? 
<laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Imagine. Look, it's not listed in there because he's not officially in yet, but whatever Dusty is paying for a goal, by God above, you put you put the house on that because they will feed that man. They will feed that man. You wait. You watch. Uh, no, I only had the four that really stood out to me this week. Uh, I've got Nick Vlusten Martin uh, for 20 disposals. Uh, I've got Josh Day Custon Martin at uh, Collingwood. He'll have 20 disposals. Jack Cruspin Martin uh, for 25 disposals. And uh, Jaden Shorten Martin for uh, 25 disposals as well. It's only four legs, but put them together. How did you four dollars and ten. Martin Short. How did you not say? Martin Short. How did you not say? He's a special guest on next week's show. <laughs> Martin Short. Martin Short. Yeah, yeah. You got any bets? Go pies. <laughs> pies head to uh, head. I keep asking. It's the same answer. It still makes me laugh. Don't know why. Maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm funny. the defective. Because it's funny. No, maybe no, I'm it, the defective. No, it's funny. Fair. Saturday afternoon is not going to be funny for you if you're a Gold Coast Suns supporter. I gave it away. Because uh, the Sydney Swans shall be hosting the Gold Coast Suns at the SCG on your Saturday afternoon. Fellas, as good as the Swans have been this year, and we've talked them up, I honestly think they revealed their level as to where they're at right now on the weekend. Really, really good, but not not premiership, not not. Do you know what I mean? They're, 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 they're a year off. Yeah, they are exactly. Thank you. They are a year off. Brisbane were great. Every time we'll talk about Brisbane later on, but every time, every time the Swans found a gear, Brisbane matched them and then went a game. Very similar to that Collingwood game I found, and then yeah. except Brisbane at the very end just turned it up. They just said, "Hey, and guess well, what? We'll, we'll, go we'll, on a well, well, not only that, but Brisbane were doing it away from home mm-hmm. in a in a cauldron." Mm-hmm. And on the other hand, Gold Coast Suns. They won that game last year against the Pies. The Pies were gettable this week. You and I famously tipped them last year. You did. And Rich told us we were... On crack. Yep, stark raving lunatic. And then I went with you this, this last week, and, and then that bit me on the bum again. So, look, I was disappointed. Hey, Gold hey. Coast. <sighs> Pies were gettable, and they should have. And they had their chances, and they did not. And and Sydney, at Sydney, I'm, I'm sorry. From the way... We've got enough of a data set now to look at what the Gold Coast brand is this year. It's still that tired old uh, yeah, uh, kind of football. Do you know what I mean? It's not inspiring. You've got a few blokes that are in the middle doing the same sort of job week in, week out. You've got a couple of young tries in there, mm-hmm. which is great to see, mm-hmm. but that's not enough to turn the tide of where this club is at right now. So, um, Whereas Sydney, name a bloke who's underperforming in that Swans unit at the minute. Can't. It's blood's culture, baby. Can't. Absolutely. I, I love it. So it's Swans 1 to 39 for me. Yeah. I think it could even be 40 plus, to be honest. It's a pretty easy game. Sydney are going to get up here. They're going to fire up after that loss. They're not going to be very happy about that Brisbane loss. Big, big loss for them, they will, really. They'll be out for blood. Mm. Because, yeah, it they was. They will be out for blood. Their game for the taking, and yeah. uh, they didn't take it. So Suns can't tip them. Sydney, Cannot tip the Suns. Swans is going to get up. Sydney, 10 wins and three losses against the Suns, just in case you needed any more convincing. And De- I think, and De- I think De- there's not tip one of those losses. Just, just to remind you, again. <laughs> I'm look, just going to have a look at the line. The, the last thing I'll say about that is just <clears throat> the Suns, as you rightly said, they've got a great midfield. Their defense is palatable. Mm. It, it's it's certainly not the worst in the in the, in the comp. Um, but their forward line outside, Cho and Casbolt, is just... Absolutely disgusting. Non-existent. Like they're just getting no production out of the out of the rest of that forward line. Ranking on the weekend, taking third in the draft, supposed to be this absolute wonder kid. Eight touches, two of them turnovers. That that's a twenty five percent. Second wasn't he? Huh? Second wasn't he? Lacocious one, ranking two. For four. No, yeah, ran, no, Jeff? ranking was three. Who was second? Anderson. Um, yeah. No, no, nah, it wasn't even him. I can't even tell you. Yeah, well, it was Anderson, wasn't it? No, nah, nah. Anderson went with... De- um, definitely wasn't. It was, I, can't, I honestly couldn't even tell you who was, who was second now. Doesn't anyway, matter. Doesn't matter. Uh, and three frees against. Oh. It, it, it was just pathetic. Right now, not AFL standard. Got to get some of these other guys in. Jeremy Sharp, Charlie Constable, Elijah Hollands. They're all banging the door down. Get them in. Get ranking out. Try and get some semblance of pressure going in this in this forward line. It's just not happening for them. I'm taking this one's 1-39. to 39. Good from you. Before uh, you talk about your bets, I'm going to ramble on a little bit. I feel like this is a bit of value if you have a little bit of a lean. Swans, 1-39, 225, and 40 plus, 240. If you think they can do it, 240 is not that bad. What's 25 plus? Is that? Uh, you can get the line at the moment is 30 plus, and it's $1.90. Yeah. I don't hate that, though. I don't yeah. hate that. What, they can't get five goals up. How much did Collingwood beat them by? Collingwood ended up mopping the floor, didn't they? Was it three goals? Uh... It was. It, no, it wasn't no, mopping the floor. It was I take like it twenty back. points. Yeah, or twenty-five it, it, it points. Wasn't so mopping. if you don't think Swans, Suns were in that, that Suns were in that most of the day. <coughs> Excuse me. They were in that most of the day. Anyway, what other bets? Take you got? what you want. Yeah, bets. Uh, Callum Mills twenty-five. Mm-hmm. 
Still paying, and that's actually surprisingly high considering. Dollar thirty-five. Yeah, see, that's surprisingly high considering who he's playing and the the, the fortnight he's had. Unreal. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chatty Warner, twenty, 20 disposals plus. for the Suns. Thanks, Mum. Isaac Heaney has not gone under fifteen disposals all year. He's paying like a dollar forty-four somewhere in there for that. I'm taking that all day long. Noah Anderson, one of those young bolters for the Suns who's working his guts out week in week out. I'll have him for twenty-five. Thank you, Dad. And uh, Errol Golden. Anytime goal kicker. Now, that one's a bit more speculative. He's about $1.62 at the minute, young Errol. But he enjoys pushing forward. He does. He gets his strikes. He might not hit it every single time, but he gets his, he's getting his looks. And I reckon he's going to get plenty of looks against the Suns on the weekend. So that is my one, two, three, four, five. Five. Nice. It's beautiful. I've got Will Haywood because he's my boy. Mm. $1.35 for a goal. Oh, Gordon. And he will literally score one every single Week and this week will not be the week that he stops. How do I miss McLean as well? McLean goal, chuck him in. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, just for a, a bit of a fluffer, Malcolm Roses for a goal. He's yeah, a, he's a beautiful kick of the footy. He actually, I, I just ran down their forward line. Roses was actually solid on the weekend. Probably their third best forward behind Troll and, and Casbolt. And he's, he's been a, good since he's been back. He's a dollar fifty four for a goal. So that's rude. Throw him in. Did I'll he play anyone respect. before the Suns? No. Uh, Northern Territory came direct from there. I like Roses. He's all right. He's under baby. So, yeah. I don't even know if it was NT Thunder. NT just... Thunder, baby. And if it wasn't the NT Thunder, we're going to look like dummies, which of course means it's time for another instalment of this week's Dummy of the Week. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. Dummy of the Week. Fellas, what's been happening? What's been happening? I've got a good one for you. Do, is it really good? It is really good, actually. All right, you know what? Save it. Let me get a few little <sighs> fl- fluffy. Let me get a few. I little, was ready then. Let me get you a few just, little you fluffy. Just got into the tip and then you just yeah. stop. Yeah. Well, no, you have your entree and then you get to your main course, don't you? Do you know what I mean? You don't, you don't jizz all the good stuff early. All mm-hmm. right, I got. I got That's okay. fair. That's fair. A couple of little short ones. Um, I was really wound up actually at um, uh, Jay Z Jay Clark on Triple M on Sunday night. So it's going back a little bit. Mm-hmm. Sunday night, he was on the radio, and uh, he's on the Sunday rub. Jay-Z said, uh, whether St Kilda should make a decision on if or when to secure Brett Ratton's services going forward, quote, does anyone here that thinks that St Kilda should continue to hold off? Has Ratton done enough to get given another contract? Now, what I love about this is the fact that they're fresh off a one-point loss, which they could have won for multiple reasons, not least of which that the weather was appallingly bad at Kazali. One point loss. You could, could, t- gone you could take nothing from that game. It wasn't a case of whoever was best. Mm-hmm. It was just a case of whoever was in front of the final side. Luckiest, yeah, literally. So, take as you said, take nothing from that game. They lose. And Jay Clark's there saying, is Brett Ratton doing enough to be the coach of the St Kilda Football Club? Son, you were not saying that the week beforehand. Shut up, man. That is peak itchy trigger finger. Just, That's could, just, just couldn't wait to fire some shots off. That's just death wishing a yeah, bloke. Shut good. up. That, that is not good. Oh. Uh, a big one that niggled me. I won't say niggled. I was like, it's, and it's not even dumb so much. as It's, it's kind of dumb, right. but it's also quite uh, steady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, this, is, this is dumb, but it's also like hypocritical, which, which sort of I think is enough to wiggle it in here. Jason Horn Francis, all right? Gave up, gave um, Silvani a knock. Now I saw the I footage. I know where this is going. Yeah. I saw the footage, yep. right? Uh, it was a lovely hit on Taron Thomas. Fair, the, clean and fair. Yes. Clean and fair. And but, then, but, but fair for JHF to stand up for his teammate as well. Yeah, absolutely. So he came over there and, and Silvani, I think where the niggle came from there was that Silvani was kneeling over, he was on the ground, and then Horn Francis came over and gave him one and got yeah, up. People's elbow. Just after his mate. People's elbow, mate. And in the aftermath of the, of the scuffle, the scuffle, sorry, the scuffle, apologies, according to uh, foxsports.com.au, Silvani appeared to taunt Horn Francis by saying, your team is shit and you're shit. Now, have you ever? <laughs> now then, now then, now then, he's right on the one hand. Of course because, he is. Because North is no good. <laughs> what he is saying <clears throat> is not factually incorrect. No, no, not at all. He's not, it's not factually incorrect on that. And Jason Horn Francis is not the world's most premier midfielder right now, seven games into his career. However, Desmond, I would like for you to tell me what exactly is it that the Victorian Centre for Cultural Irrelevance has done since the last, oh, I don't know, turn of the millennium? Have they done anything notable? How many flags have they got? What are, what are they called? They're called Carlton and uh, Essendon. And uh, I feel like Jack Silvani plays for one of those teams. I also feel like during their peak times of absolute shittery, yeah. 
He Jack's, has been Jack, the poster boy. Jack Silvani was the worst player on the worst team in the comp. This close to getting delisted multiple times. And if his if last for... name wasn't Silvani, he would, he would have been flipping burgers with Cooper Gregg. I would have thought. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it, it was that, that other dead beat, the one that we always like to run down. I don't know. It's just, Bootsman. Uh, Big Josh, Joshy jo- Bootsman. Jo- Joshy Bootsman. <laughs> Old dick pick Bootsman. <laughs> I saw that and I was like, look, I love the niggle. I absolutely do. And I was... Rightly so for Jason Hall Francis standing up for his teammate. Mm. Then I saw Jack Silvani say that, and I was like, you have got to be kidding me. Carlton haven't done anything at all. They've been good for the first seven rounds of this year. Not even all of those seven rounds, I might add. And he's throwing barbs like, your team is shit. And your shit. Oh, my God. If it was Luke Jackson that ran up to you and gave you the big one, you'd be like, you know what, Luke? On the chin. Yeah. Give it me. Yeah. I deserve that. I, 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 I actually, I went back. I could not cop that from Silvani. I would not have blamed Horn France if he turned around and went full Tyson Fury mode on him and just clapped ah. him straight in the jaw. Unreal. For, furthermore, I went back and uh, and I had a look at the stats between these two. So Jack in his first year played eight games. Horny's played seven, so it's pretty pretty even. Pretty even. Uh, Horny averaging somewhere around the, uh, the 19 disposal category at the minute. Uh, Silvani averaged nine and a half. Uh, and, and, and what a nine and a half as well. Uh, and uh, effect, uh, Jack Silvani averaged 5.3 effective disposals per game to Horney's 12.3. Uh, kick efficiency 49.1 for Silvani to um, 55% from Horney. And the list goes on. I could, I could go through. I could go through. Now, come on. Now, Jack, if you're going to slap a man in the face with your brown low that you've won, fair enough. But you've got to get that brown low first, brother. Absolutely. Oh, I dear. mean, and, and you know how many brown low votes, um, brown low votes Jack Silvani has accrued in his time in the league? Uh, would you like to tell me? Rhymes Three. with Nero. Oh. Big Woo. donuts. I would have said he would have got at least one. No, eh. not, not even one. That's and, poor. Look, again, take your barbs where you get them. The only thing I'll say is a grade school insult and it takes one to know one. I like and that. And that, that's basically where that starts and <laughs> no, stops. No, you love what am I. Exactly. That's all I had for dummy. Now I'm keen now. Right, now. Basically, after all this time, the, the award should be named after this man. I'm excited. And it's our favourite. It's Tom Brown. Tom Brown in the headlines again. So I was sitting there Friday night watching the, uh, the halftime show between uh, the Eagles and the Tigers. There was nothing better to do because it was a terrible game of football and I thought, well, this halftime show might be... Entertaining, if nothing else. Sorry, when you say halftime show, do they genuinely have a halftime show? When I say halftime show, you know, Hodgie, but, Hodgie's in one panel, Tom, oh. Bra- Tom Brown's in another panel, JB's in another panel, so they're just having a chin wag. So it wasn't them. Beyonce and Adam Levine? It was not. Oh, okay. It's it was thing. not, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but they were discussing the topic of priority picks. Okay. All right, the, their validity. And uh, do North deserve one for the situation they currently find themselves in? All right. Now, there's Tom Brown says there's arguments for and against this. And he just wants to see it as uncompromised as possible and would prefer if they got rid of the priority pick system as a whole. We've discussed this. I I agree with Tom. Get rid of it. No one deserves any priorities for running your team into the ground. That's just stupid. That's poor list management. He then said, he suggests that perhaps instead of North Melbourne receiving a priority pick, that maybe Essendon is more deserving because they haven't won a final since 2004, did you know, Des? Right, I want, to know, I want to know who Tom Brown supports. I'm going to find this out now. <laughs> Unbelievable <laughs> scene. He started listing off these these uh, these reasonings. JB and Luke Hodge look like they've just been punched in the snout, right? <laughs> Luke Hodge, I'm going to cut you off there, mate. I'm going to cut you off. Essendon, really, they've won 12 games, 12 games, and 12 games the last couple of seasons. In my opinion, they're a big Melbourne club. North probably need the help because they're not a destination club, whereas Essendon a bit more so. Dodoro is the biggest CU next Tuesday to deal with in the entire league in terms of trading. I've heard this. And then Tom Brown's going to sit there and say, oh, give them a priority pick. They deserve a bit of help because they haven't won a final since 2004. Uh-uh. So they can trade it on another Dylan Shield. Correct. That is just bad list management. That <sighs> is not worthy of any pick. Well, give it to Carlton because they haven't won a flag since 95. Correct. They give deserve it, one. Give it to St Kilda. They haven't won one since '66 or whatever the hell it was. Yeah, give, give one to, to give it to Gold Coast. You know what? Because they suck. Just give and every, they always get. Just them. give everyone a priority pick and call it. I don't know the first round of the draft. <laughs> Unbelievable uh, scenes. Tom Brown goes for Collingwood, by the way. Oh, good. No, worth no. Worth no? I, I just like I said, just could not believe it. That was one of the dumbest things. Give Essendon a priority. Oh uh, God, a brownie. <laughs> You're so silly. 
Silly, silly boy. Silly boy. Um, well, two teams that definitely deserve a priority pick who are playing on Saturday afternoon at Monica Oval in the ACT, of course. It is the GWS Giants who will be hosting the Geelong Cats. Hosting the Geelong Cats. Desmond. Just quietly, this is the last, I believe, real tight game of the round. Mm -hmm. So this will be, uh, yeah, when you have a look and a scroll through all mm. the other games, it looks like it's going to be some, uh, some shellacking. So in saying that, it's going to be... A tight game. I think the cats are going. <laughs> I knew. I knew they'd Genius. get you. I knew. I didn't get you. Got you because we made eye contact. Now I think the cats, <laughs> if they're going to be a real finals contender here, and I know it's real early in the season, and cats like to like that. What were they one and three last year? And they 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 build it up as we go. If they are actually going to be a threat in the finals, they're going to beat the Giants here. They've got a history of losing to the Giants at this oval in Canberra. Is it in camera? Monica? Yep. I was about Checking. to say, do you have a stat there for Checking. me? Checking. <laughs> no, it's in camera. Made me sweaty. <sighs> no, nah, they, they do have a history, but I think that they're going to fire up and they're going to do it. I'm going to go against history here. I think the Cats are going to show us that they are a better side than they have been showing. And I think they're going to beat the Giants. I know Giants had a great run of form against Adelaide, but Adelaide didn't turn up. I don't know how much of it was Adelaide didn't turn up as Giants look good. And I'm not going to buy it until Giants show me They've got to show me two weeks, in a, two weeks in a row, three weeks in a row, not just one good week against Adelaide. They were abysmal. We watched it live. They didn't put... Well, they're just a young team. They're just a young team. They, the Crows. They, yeah. They were, just, they were <clears> trying, <throat> but they were just not good enough, and Giants ran over the top of them. And also, Toby Green coming back. Umpires love Toby Green. Real weird saying that. They love him, do they? Adelaide. In Adelaide, wow. though. No, in Adelaide. I've heard he, different. He yeah. had... <laughs> Unusual. I don't know what's going on down <coughs> south of the border, but he got real preferential treatment on the weekend. It was ridiculous. Like that, you could not. They Adelaide could not touch him, and he was slotting all the pies that you. Adelaide could touch him. Because Adelaide he couldn't. No, he's could genuinely not, could not. Touch one him. of the best players in the competition playing on Billy Frampton. Correct. Yeah. No, for it, just Chase so Jones. Stupid. Oh, like, like, you you watch, the, watch yeah. the first quarter again, and there was I think there was three free kicks again. Oh, you're watching it, and the three free kicks against Toby that were ridiculous, redunculous, and. Uh, and yeah, he's still negative his... 412 for his career, though, so it doesn't make much of a difference. He's, he was better for the run second up. He absolutely was. He was better for the run second up. Uh, Geelong, is, he's right, though. Geelong has one, one win, three losses at Manuka Oval, and they'll be smarting after that loss against Freo. I think they're going to come out guns blazing, but the key was there to defeat them. Fremantle showed the way. Young mids and forward pressure constantly, and that's what won it for Freo. And Giants did the same thing against mm -hmm. the Crows. Mm -hmm. Mid pressure, forward pressure, constantly moving forward. Crow's back line broke down from repeat entries. Mm -hmm. A couple of umpires might have helped, but it doesn't matter. Like the GWS were good enough to win it. And if they repeat that against Geelong on, on a ground that suits them a lot better than it does the Cats, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe the Giants can win. And, and so I've tipped them 1-39. I'm, I'm tipping the Giants as well, actually. To be honest, <laughs> only like because the Giants tend to do this when Leon Cameron's job is in danger. For whatever reason, they just perk up. But he actually made some really good and smart coaching decisions on the weekend. Mm. Cogs completely out of the midfield, playing forward. Looks, good. Looked solid up there. Obviously, he's not been good in patches of, of the last couple of years. The better move was moving Whitfield forward. Yes. Yeah, he, was, he, was getting, he, was, he was getting none of the pill down back. Just looked lazy, sluggish, which, you know, that's not really Whitfield's MO. Threw him forward, kicked three goals. He is super clean with the footy. Just plays perfectly to Hogan and Green's strengths. Um, I don't know that the Giants are good enough to make finals, but I do think they're good enough to beat the Cats. That performance against Adelaide was better than any performance I've seen Geelong put out this year. Take out the North game because, I mean... North. Just, north. Just North. Adelaide have been in good form, and the Giants absolutely pulverised them. They were playing... Like they said it too many times on the broadcast... But they were playing globetrotter football. All the underground hand passes, like their confidence was back. Toby Green is the barometer. And if they get that first goal on the weekend, I just heard a heard a thump under the table from Rich after you said a uh, Giants are back. I like the Giants. What, what, oh, we, what are, we are aware. <laughs> we, we, we are. What do you think that could aware. be, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> His big toe stubbing the table. It, it was, and Mr. repeatedly, Easton, <laughs> Mr. Easton Wood over here. Yeah. <laughs> like, at the end of the day, I don't really like what the Cats are putting out on the field at the moment. I don't think they were that good on the weekend. And if it wasn't for a couple of late goals, Freya would have won by more. Giants proved me wrong because I love it when Cats lose. Got to show me more than one good week. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Interesting. So Giants, Giants and Cats? Catters. Catters it is. All right, bets-wise, I'm looking at Joel Selwood, most consistent mid for Geelong at the minute. In that, terms is, that is sad. 
<coughs> that is not really sad. And I think it's that's a right. reason why. Not, not, no disrespect Frio to Selwood. Selwood. No, no disrespect no, no, to Selwood. No, not at all. Yeah. But it's just an indictment on where they're at. That's what, you, that's what happens when you don't blood any youngsters and Charlie Constable goes and plays in Gold Coast VFL team. But even then, he, he wouldn't solve their woes. No. Guthrie has 35 one week and has 17 the but next. But they've done nothing to improve that situation. No, they haven't. No, true, true, true. Uh, no, but they're big s- silly selly for 20 disposals. Thanks very much. Isaac Cumming, 20 disposals. Uh, found his mojo again on the weekend Massive. with 33. Liking him here. Uh, Canelio has not dipped underneath 20 all year. I think that continues. Mm. I know he got 20 on the knocker on the weekend, but I think he continues. Canelio a goal. Got to be. He'll push forward. I did. Did he wait? How many did he kick on the weekend? Two, two, two or three. What? What? Look, hey, if it's work, if the role's working for him, let long may it rain. Yeah. Canelio goal. Thanks very much. Josh Kelly, twenty five disposals, had forty one. He's, he's again. He's he's back back back, back to Kelly of old. God, I love watching him when he's in full flight. Smooth, smooth, oh, silk. And uh, now I, I looked at Tom Stewart. He is paying a dollar twenty for twenty disposals, which is rude after what forty or whatever it was on the weekend. Mm. I'm just gonna let that sit for a week. Because he's going to have something like 30 this week, right? And that will, the week after means the odds will come back up to about $1.28 and then I'll jump back on. So in the meantime, I'm getting his younger brother, Tom Atkins, in the door for 15 <laughs> disposals. Thanks very much. That'd be about $1.26. And he Can did it again on the weekend, I believe. 17. Com- comfortably. 17. He just loves it having that mid, mid-late teens. Yeah. Se- Same as 17 dead. all the time. <laughs> wow. Oh, it's hot. Nah, there. nah, just joking. Uh, <laughs> look, I've, got, I've got Lucky Whitfield for a goal. Dollar seventy four at the moment. Uh, after three on the weekend, that's rude. All right, uh, Jezza for two plus against the old team. Mm-hmm. He, he would love to jag a couple on him. Tom Green for twenty five plus because no one in the Cats midfield stopping him from having twenty five plus. And I also had Cali for twenty five plus. Good man, good man. I like that a lot. I like it a lot. I've seen what's next. Yeah, I know. Well, we can get through this reasonably this quick. Will, honestly, thirty seconds. We've just talked about it longer than we need. I would, to talk I would about have thought again. so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Saturday night at the Gabba. The worst place to play the Brisbane Lions, who are playing at the Gabba on Saturday night at the Gabba. It is the Brisbane Lions hosting the West Coast Eagles. This is oh. going. This is going to be horrifyingly bad for the West Coast. Here we they, go. They, they thought it was bad last week. One hundred and nine points. Now, look, literally, I think you just need to for West. I'm just going to. Are you going to talk about West Coast or Brisbane? No, I was going to say something pithy and pointless. Go on. Look at the score last week, mm. the West Coast score. Mm. That's all you need to know about West Coast. Mm. That is literally like, I don't like it when people, like, I call it like wiki capping, where they like look at the scores and go, oh, they beat them, they beat because AFL maths doesn't always equal out. No. Look at the score. That's exactly what West Coast are. <laughs> they are minus 100 straight away. And you know what's funny? Ever since we called them bin juice, they've just gotten worse. They're literally and worse. getting worse. Yes. They like, have... like we, there's no describing words for them anymore. No. I'm lost. Webster's Dictionary, nothing. Lost. And as we said about Brisbane, sorry, Richie. No, you, no, please. No. As we said about Brisbane, they went and rolled Sydney, who are a great young team, about a year away from actually contending for the flag. They've gone, hey, guess what? Gone to their turf, got the got the got the socks up, mm-hmm. and they just rolled them. Just rolled them, never in doubt. So we've all, just okay. just to cap yeah. this, Lions forty plus. Brisbane probably, I think Brisbane hundred plus, whatever that pays. <laughs> oh, I don't, actually don't Lions, hate that. Lions, even bad. Yeah, well, Lions, yeah, find the biggest realistic margin you can find on there. Seriously, if you can find like seventy 100, plus, hundred plus is the only margin. You, can find. Give me some, you find me some margins. My, find me my some only margins. other comment on this, and it almost went in the dummy section, but I just had to. You have to, you have to stand a coach backing his team, and he said, oh, "Adam Simpson, after the game, I've seen everyone talking about us." I actually thought the players' effort wasn't that bad on, on Friday night. I actually thought it was okay. There you go. What's he going to say? Exactly. This that's team's what, shit. That's what You're I, that, shit. That is, that, shit. That, is why, that is why I said you have to stand a coach standing up for his players. I love it. Even yeah. if he looks like the world's biggest dolt. <laughs> like he watched a different game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, look, Neil, yeah, well, what's to say? Neil's Nothing. in Brownlow form. Yep. The, the Lions found another cog when Sydney did, went with them and matched them and then beat them. I mean, that's if they bring fifty percent of that. Uh, I remember playing a football game when I was at school. Des, I was in uh, year twelve at the time, and uh, I'm not saying who was playing for it. I'm not saying who we played against, uh, but it was a um, it was a school team that you would both know very well. And um, at halftime, the coach brought us over into the huddle and said to us, "All right, boys, now good half. No disrespect to our opposition." but I want everyone to start kicking on their non-preferred side for the rest of the game, please. And I genuinely suspect Fagan might say something similar at, uh, at halftime of this game. 
It would not surprise he me. Will not. Fagan will he, not. He, Fagan will literally He'll go. tell him before they go out. The, 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 hard, the hardest man in what? footy. Ah, ah, and he, he, would say, ah. he would say it's 100 points at half time. Let's make it two. <laughs> hope so. Des, what do you got? All right. Here are my bets. We're going to move on to bets because there go. is no more prediction. Give them. Needed. You Brisbane, 40 plus, dollar twenty. Yuck. Don't do that. Brisbane to win by 60. That's just disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> Brisbane to win by 65 plus is a dollar ninety. That is much, much okay. nicer for me. But at five dollars forty, Brisbane to win at a hundred plus is my bet of the week. Five forty. Five forty. I'm I'm five forty. I'm literally betting on it now. I can't there's so many lights, so the, my wow. my facial camera will not let me bet on it. But I've got it in the bet slip waiting for this. hundred hundred point janks are, are, are rarer and rarer these days. What's like eighty play? Go on. What's what give Oh, me. you can only go so it's a super margin. Oh. I'd, I'd so in, you I'd go ninety 100. to ninety nine is what? nine fifty. <laughs> 80 to 89, it's 8, 825, and then 70 to 70, uh, 70 to 79 is 725. So you can just arb all of them. Yeah, but 100 plus, way better. 100 plus, I, I, don't, I, I mean, there's obviously ways it can happen. Mm. I don't see Brisbane not winning this by 100. The way the Eagles played last week, Brisbane will absolutely destroy them. Oh, I've got Dan McStay for two plus goals because Dan Hur's out. That's the only thing for Brisbane. That's, that, that, that's there's going to be a lot of goals Dan, kicked. Dan, Mc, <laughs> Dan McStay will just chip in with his, his eight. And get on with it. It's contract year, baby. Uh, Greg Clark for twenty plus disposals. I like because that. Because someone's gonna have disposals. And yes. he, had 20, he had twenty-four on debut. That's two dollars too. Why don't you throw that in with them getting beaten by a hundred plus and make a weekend of it? <laughs> Clark twenty plus, dollar twenty-six, Neil thirty plus, dollar thirty-nine. I had some similar stuff. I had Neil anytime goal. Zorko anytime goal. He's gonna sloop forward now that K Dean Coleman's back. Mm-hmm. Uh, Neil thirty disposals, thanks. And then the usual suspects of Nation Witherden to have twenty disposals. Witherden's each. out with COVID. Damn. That's what I'm saying. This is going to be an absolute damn. destruction. That's actually bad. I did not know that. It is going to be so bad. Oh, so poor. damn. 540. That's my lock of the week. Well, look, Chuck Greg Clark in there as well. That is like going that. to be It's going to be so bad. Look, just bang all of them together and we'll see you in Carbo. Absolutely. If you like BDSM, you are in for a treat. <laughs> Des, do you know what frottage is? I don't, but what is it? You Google it later. Uh, we're going to go to the Saturday. That's going to amuse me more than it's going to amuse anyone at home. Google it in front of your kids. Frottage, right. trust me. You read it, no, no joke. Uh, Saturday night at Marvel Stadium sees the Essendon Bombers hosting the Hawthorne Hawks. Now, Dan, now, Dan, if you're the Hawks last week, you went down against the COVID riddled Ds. I don't think you lost any uh, any any admirers with that game. No, I, th- I thought they they performed admirably. They did. They're playing up and above where they're. At. He just found out what frottage is. No, <laughs> no, you'll say nothing about it. Yeah, no, nah, don't. No, don't. There's kids that watch I'm, this. It's somewhere. a generated show. Images. No. There, there's gambling addicted kids that watch this show, Desmond. <laughs> yeah. they, they don't need any more yeah. problems in their lives. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they just lost the house, Des. They don't need a porn addiction. <laughs> um, with it. Yeah, you wouldn't have lost any admirers no, at, not all, at but all. But I think again, all that says to me is Melbourne are borderline unstoppable. They are like. That, I don't want to look at that. I really don't. <laughs> they, they've lost. They, they lost players that are genuinely important to them, and it just was like, oh well, whatever. Yeah. What else is there? I don't care. Like even halfway through the game, Clary was getting off the chain. They tried to tag him, and then Track was like, all right, well, I'll stop having my half-ass twenty-three disposals every week. I'll just decide to have thirty. Mm-hmm. They, you just can't stop them. And I actually really wanted to tip the Saints in this game just to excite my weekend a little bit. I just physically can't do it. You know, we, we're talking Essendon Hawthorne. Nah. <laughs> I was so confused then. I was waiting. I was, Sorry, I, I was, I was I, waiting. I, I, I've, I've moved on. All the frottage. <laughs> the, nah. uh, the, the, the demons are very good. We'll, we'll get there. It's typically me that would do that. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. So I was talking about the Hawks can we, who, can who we, played can we, Melbourne. Can we just talk about that game now? We'll I'll, get there I'll in already given the rundown. We'll get there in a minute. No, no, no. Look, I've, I'm, I'm <laughs> big on, it again. I'm yeah. big, no, seriously, I'm big on the Hawks this year. I'm really liking them. Much better than I expected. That year in the wilderness has done Sicily right. Because he's come back a different bloke. He should be the next captain. And he is the genuinely right bloke to lead A, the back line, and B, that crop of youngsters coming through. He's genuinely one of the best defenders in the comp as well. I, all Australian a, conversation. A, a year out. And, you know, he was manhandling Ben Brown at points during that game. It, it was. And Ben Brown, like, got, got inches on him. Mm-hmm. Got yeah, inches too. on him. He genuinely. Yeah. Now, nah, look. Uh, I, I'm, I, just to echo that, I'm really yeah. impressed with what Sam Mitchell was doing. Because he's getting the best out of players that are, we all thought were, you know, Mid. Borderline mid, yeah. Mm. Dylan Moore is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Like 33 in a goal on the weekend. <laughs> playing off the half forward flank. <laughs> yeah. 33 disposals does not happen in no. the forward line. It is absurd. That's Neil-esque from that what, position. What he is doing. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the Hawks as well. And they, they're 
you know, in reference to what I was saying about Melbourne, they are also losing pl- lost players that are important to them. They've got, what, they've got no Jath at the moment. Yes, no Jath, so no, th- no Ruck. So there's no run off the halfback line. They've got no Rucks whatsoever. Max Lynch, you know, battled valiantly mm. against Gorn. Just got absolutely Smashed. ruined, though. Yeah, you can't really do anything about that. Um, Yeah, and the Bombers, I am the complete opposite. Well, no, you, you actually are right because Hawks are down all of their Rucks and several quality mids. And the Bombers have a ruck in Draper who's not but he's getting quietly better next year's his year mm-hmm. Draper just 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 you remember Big Don and they've got some genuinely good mids on their day Kings come out and said they're stat patters they and I'm, I'm inclined to agree they are but yeah. it's not just them it's it's the Caldwells it's the McGraths it's all these either Hines I'm not seeing much of him later it's he's all in the VFL these, well see there you I, go that's what I, I was talking to someone about this the other day I can't abide by that. You're going to tell me that there's 22 players better than Nick Hine in that team? No. That is just, that is an indictment on Ben Rutten. That's poor coaching, poor selection. uh, One thing I'm going to add to this as well, just that's poor from Essendon is, when you look at the Western Bulldogs score, Mm. do you remember what it was? No, uh, I you said count. it. You said it. It doesn't even matter if it's over 100 because well, yeah, they're leaking 100 every single time. 103, mm-hmm. Every game, and yeah. you said it. I reckon you said it about round three when it started to become a trend. Mm-hmm. Every single game, they just they just. I think they've gone over 100 so every game apart from two, when, which they went over 90 or something like it's that. Just anyway. such poor, it's horrible. It's poor defense. Like it's, and then you're gonna sit there and tell me, yeah, they're better than Nick Hind. They're, those defenders suck because they're all what touches, but they're not playing the team defense. No, they had 39 inside 50s against the Dogs. All of their midfielders are getting 30, 35 touches every week. Where are they going? Zero clearances. All they're doing is exactly what Kingy said, handballing back and forth to each other, chipping around. They look off blokes that are leading up from the forward line like Hobbs or Durham or Archie Perkins. And all they want, all they're interested in doing, handballing, chip kicks. And if they do feel like going forward, who's that? Peter Wright. Oh, he's got four blokes on him. Oh, well. Bomb it in. Put it on his head. Yep. And Bombing that's why in. Hawthorne are going to roll over the top. Absolutely. Much better side. Much better side. They, they already, at this young stage, they play with a cohesion that Essendon, for whatever reason, still don't have. You know, you've got young blokes like like Perkins is doing a fine job in his second season. Mm-hmm. Nick Martin, you couldn't ask for any more from him. No. Blokes like Durham, uh, and even, I suppose, Guelphie to a bit of an extent as well. Like, they're only going to be what they are. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're given it some, mm-hmm. but not everyone's... Swimming the their, same their, way. Their strengths are not being played to because guys like McGrath, Merritt, Parrish all want to have 35 mm. handballs a game. Correct. It's crazy to me in in a 12-month span, if you look back at the pod, we were quite high on Essendon. They yeah. look like a great young team. They were playing awesome football It was concerning for people that don't like Essendon because they were looking excellent. And guess what? 12 months down the track, they have pooed their pants. And Stringer's out again now. Stringer, hammy. Done, 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 done another hammy. hammy, his other side. I didn't know that. Um, yeah. I think, obviously, I thought, la- yeah. last year what we were seeing was John Walsfold's coaching. This year what we're seeing is Ben Rutten's coaching. It's interesting. And that. Ben Rutten's coaching is right. not good. Looks like he's an, Way an too average coach and uh, Way good, too at, good at making a burger, though. Good at making a burger. A great Absolutely. the truck burger. Truck and, burger. Can, and can put a lot of food away. I've heard stories. Yes. They call them the truck for no reason. This is true. Now, Hawks, 1 to 39 Girth. for mine. Hawks, Hawks, yep. Hawks. Hawks, lovely, lovely. You got some bets, mate? Yeah, I do. Go on then. Uh, for this game as well, not the Demons one, which I do have get bets for them. Scramble's going to come before that, baby. Uh, I've got Dylan Moore for a first half goal. A first half goal? Did it again on the weekend. He's going to do it everywhere. That's five games in a row he's had a, go- a goal in the first half. Because his anytime goal scorer numbers are just not. There's nothing there anymore. Man's a, man's a front. Yeah, it's about $1.16. They, 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 they've pol- been pulverised into dust. We were on them early in the year. The betting agency's got hold of him. So now I'm going first half goal. What's the point? $1.69. Nice, right? <laughs> uh, Guelphie for a goal. He's gone forward. Yes. And he's jagged one the last four weeks in a row. Mm-hmm. $1.68. Heppel 20 plus because he's a slut. <laughs> Steady. And he'll get 20 plus <laughs> and do nothing with them, just like every other week. $1.30. James Sicily for 20 plus. My guy. $1.30. Disrespectful to the big sis. Uh, sure. Zach Merritt. 30 meaningless disposals for a dollar 37 <laughs> and 100 meters game. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that is being generous. But yes. 37 for 30. Yeah. That's still and right. he will have it. Yeah, I would have thought. He's had that five games in a row. I would have thought. And he'll continue to do it. I would have thought. And Essendon will continue to lose. I would have thought. Uh, I had big sissy, the sissy boy, uh, for 20 years. Uh, Nick Martin, 22 disposals, please. He's getting a there or thereabouts every single week. I think he had 22 on the weekend. Uh, Dylan Moore, you do not have 33 off a forward flank one week and then go under like less than half that the next week against Essendon. Dylan Moore for 15 disposals. You can make arguments. Still paying in, good money. You can make arguments for the AA squad in every position across the park, not the forward flank. No. Dylan Moore, Sone. that is his. Uh, Even yes. if he misses every game for the rest of the year, he's. Done now. Correct he won't answer. Get it, though. 
Nah, Joker, probably not. No, no. it'll be, be some midfielder. It'd be, Mer- it'd be McRae. It'd be, <laughs> it'd be, it'd be McRae. Uh, Dylan Moore, 15 disposals. Thanks, Mum. Uh, Chad Wingard, anytime goal kicker. He's pretty much had one in every single game he's played yep. this year. He's been very consistent. Uh, Jarman Impey only played something like three or four games this year, I think it, it has been, but he's had... Uh, been good. He's gone underneath 15 disposals once, and that's good enough for me to throw him in there. And same deal with Tom Cutler for Essendon. Not a name I say on this show often, but he's gone under that 15 disposal mark, I think, once this year. My ones maybe twice. But um, that plus the money says that was a good bet for mine. Put them together. Thanks. Love it. Yep. Now we can move on to a game that I was actually talking about. Melbourne Demons St. Kilda say... Uh, 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 I nearly got away with it. uh, 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 uh. Do you know what? I'm not going to lie. The scramble this week is not as silly as normal. There are some uh, there are some interesting questions, and I want to pick your bloke or pick the brains of you. <laughs> He's been looking at that fraudage. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> fraudage, nasty. Do not look up on <laughs> images. Now it comes up with a lot of arty stuff. It's all about art. I'm quite an artiste. All right, I'm going to ask both you blokes. These this is a, they all are both of you. It's a, it's a double trouble question. Mm. All right, we've just got some warm up ones. Pepsi or Coke? Coke. Yeah. But diet, I'm not a big calorie yeah, fan. Yeah. I don't mind Coke Zero, actually. Yeah, it's good. Can Can I, can't would you rather be a cat or a dog? Dog. Dog. All right. Would you rather clean, if you're a cleaner, poo, pee, or vomit? Pee? I mean, that's the easiest one. Yeah. Yep. All right. Would you uh, rather... No. What, no, what kind? What, a human shit? Yeah. Pee. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to what? What shit would have to be that you'd dog. be okay? Well, uh, yeah, easy. exactly. Could have been anything. Dog poo, you scoop it up, bang, gone. All right. Would you rather drown to death? Or bleed, or drown, would you drown or bleed to death? I bleed. Uh, I'd rather bleed to death. Drowning yeah. would be horrible. Yes, correct. It really would be. Probably top three ways to die. <laughs> I would have thought. But uh, worst ways, as opposed yeah. to oh yeah, yeah. That well, that's a, that's another another pod for another time. Yeah, yeah top three. Would you rather be Carlito or Toby? In the current position, <laughs> yeah, definitely Toby. <laughs> 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 I refrain from answering. Continue. <laughs> All right. Would you rather be ugly with an English accent or pretty with a hillbilly accent? P- p- pretty, pretty with, with a hillbilly, hillbilly accent. Yeah, yeah you trust. I mean, I, trust. Yeah. What? Not in time, Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. You're pretty. You don't have to talk. I <laughs> had a red liter, two liter of Mountain Dew. My mouth was on fire. <laughs> yeah, and people will still be attracted to that somehow. Correct. Because you, if you're a good looking Don, doesn't matter how you speak, you're laughing. All right. Would you rather get your face farted in or your leg sharded on? <laughs> By who? <laughs> Me. <laughs> <laughs> I got the face. I didn't think about who it was, but... I got the, I got the face. A fart in your face or a shark in your I'll foot? Take the, no, I'll take the face. You cop that and just move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> It'd be rude. Oh, be... uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you get right, on with it. Yeah. Let's do it on the pod. All right. Let's not and say <laughs> we right. did. Would you rather have a ginormous steroid out upper body, but 30 centimetre legs, which is like a ruler, or would you rather be jacked as with horse legs, Four meters long wingspan, but like literally no, no torso. First option. Yeah, Terry Crews pulls it off. Yeah, go on. Then. You just be. There's no benefit to. It's, that, it's like that wrestler with no legs. It just said like the second option. You just sound like you'd look horrible. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. Bird. You're big bird. There's plenty of blokes get around with big juiced up a yeah. frames and. No just wear track suit pants. Yeah, exactly. Done. Oh, well, that was easy. Seen nice. a few of those operating. That was an easy scrap. <laughs> I would have thought. <laughs> I've learned a lot about you boys. Oh, I'm yeah. This too, all in the too, too much, I think. Not bad. Yeah, but not bad from you, Des. Not bad from just, you. Just some, just spruce it up. I love, how, be... I love how the screen was just turning to would you rather. Yeah, yeah what it has. Like, also, that to be real silly. Everyone. Also, I'm terrified at the fact that I'm saying not bad from you. And you were talking about sharting on each other's legs. <laughs> and that's my measuring stick. That, just take that as your comparison for how bad it's been in the past. It's been poor. Oh, God. All right. Sunday afternoon at the MCG sees the Melbourne Demons, who we've already discussed for the last 50 minutes, <laughs> take on the St. Kilda Saints. Desmond, what have the Saints scored goals and points in the last two weeks? Oh, in the last two weeks, eh? Mm. Tell me. 14 goals, 34. Yeah, real poor. Now, I know the Demons, they were 9-22. And then last week they were 13-13, which isn't great either. But my question to you is, if you're the St Kilda, can you afford to give Melbourne that same amount of a look-in with 34 behinds? No. Obviously not. No. Obviously not. We've actually spoken about both of these teams. We talked about St Kilda in the Port game and Melbourne in the previous game because Dan went a bit AWOL. Yeah. And, I just get uh, so excited watching Melbourne play footy. I <laughs> and that's can't it. Help it. And that is it. And I, I think love Melbourne, good footy. Melbourne really are going to win. And beat teams like St Kilda that are St Kilda are not a bad team, and St Kilda will 
will score goals in rapid succession. I do not know if they will do that against Melbourne because Melbourne are obviously an elite defence. You can't. Melbourne will literally win this game by however much they want. If they want to win this game by 10 points, it won't be a t- close 10 points. Like Everyone knew that they were going to beat Hawthorne on the weekend. Fair? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everyone knew they were going to win. They still won by like, what, 10 points, 12 points. I don't know how much they actually won by. I don't know the exact number, but it was like two kicks. They were never in doubt. They can do that to St. Kilda or they can just blast them and win by 50 points. Mm-hmm. Whatever they want to do, they will do. Melbourne are going to win. We don't need to talk about this much longer. No. They're, again, I said it last week. I'll say it again. There's literally no chinks in Melbourne's armour. There's nope. just There is just not. You have, to, you have to be perfect to beat them and hope that they are just playing a, an average, average day of footy. Um, at this point in time, Brisbane can beat them for the premiership, and that is about it. And I don't even think that's going to be close. I think they're going to roll. Could could they go unbeaten this year? They could, but they Law, won't. Law of Averages say no. Has that ever happened? Uh, Not in, oh, in I, AFL? I, I actually AFL reckon, history? I've got this recollection that Essendon did it in 2000. They, I think they did. Or they might have lost against... Uh, it was St. Some... Kilda were close. <sighs> I, I'm pretty sure that it was the Dons that went 22 and 0 at some stage. Or, I'm, I'm or sh- no, like, or, or, or 22 or something like that. Or when did the Cats get that loss the other year? Did they have a loss? Yeah, did it, they, they didn't go and beat in the whole year. There's, it's look, this D's team is as good a football team as we've seen in my lifetime. Anyway, they are just about unstoppable. Um, like I said, the Saints really you've got to be perfect to beat the Demons. I can't see them doing it based on their last few few weeks. Mm-hmm. I actually saw a story from Mitch Cleary today. Uh, it was Jack Higgins' day off from yep. training. Yep. Spent the day uh, just bit of, putting a bit of extra work in, goal kicking practice. Nice. That's good. great. That's good. Why is it taking you six years to figure <laughs> out that you are shit at goal kicking? It's a bit late to the, uh, a bit late to the and party. And why, why has no one at St. Kilda told him this prior to last week? A bit late to the party on that one. So I'm just... Like, um, look, and, that, and that is not a rip on Jack Higgins, but his goal kicking has not been crash hot since the start of his career. So I don't know why it's taking till now. That is fair. Last week, Max King kicked one goal seven. It was And missed one from about 12 metres out. And then no doubt he'll kick four goals this week and the AFL media will be saying, oh, he's the best key forward in the competition. Well, he's not. He's not. Not until he can kick straight more than he misses. One goal seven is abominable. Would you have ever seen Jason Dunstall do that? Never. Never. Seven one, yes. Just, not yeah, seven. they're not beating the days. They, so, uh, they, they are not the team. I just realised I didn't have any bets for this, so I was just very quickly scrambling. Well, before you do no. that, I'm just going to say no, the I'm Bombers gonna, went 21 and one. Who did? 21 and that, one I, Bombers 2000. Actually, that is a very similar season. I actually but. reckon as well. I think that year they lost to the Western Bulldogs, who were bottom of the table. Correct. They were some of the last. Game Correct. Yeah, did lose like to that. Western Bulldogs and in were, round and they, 17. And they were bottom of the table, and everyone thought, yeah, easy money. That was probably a dollar two versus sixteen dollar type situation. That's funny. That's funny. You remember. So. West Coast, uh, get Colin, the bets on. Collingwood is the first and only club to record an undefeated home and away season in the league's history with an 18-zip record. But it was on 19 was tw- in the 20s. 29. Yeah, so it doesn't yeah. count. No, it doesn't count for shit all, mate. Uh, yeah, look, um, D's had multiple outs, and they look great against the Hawks. I already said so, that. Yes, so, but, no, but when these blokes <laughs> come in after yeah. a week sitting yeah. on the couch having yeah. a laugh instead of battering themselves. Yeah. <laughs> versus... Frotting. Versus yeah, steady versus the Saints outfit that just just climbed up each other's butts in the mud for a whole week, as you said, Ollie Wines, toughest game he's ever played. They're not going to bounce back from that either. No, well I promise you the Saints weren't just skipping through thinking what's what's Ollie whining about? This was easy as. Mm. So Saints going to be tired. D's are going to be fresh. Can the Saints challenge for four quarters? Because that's the thing. Everyone Melbourne's faced yet has not given them a full four quarter effort, and I'm waiting to see that. If I can see a team crack in for four quarters against the D's and the D's still win. Then who knows? Who as, knows? They could go unbeaten. As I said, that Saints are just not the team. I, I, as I said earlier, I would love to tip them because I'd love a bit of spice on my Sunday Arvo, but or Saturday night, whatever. Sun, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday Arvo, Arvo, but they're just not the team. They Saint, are not the team. They had twenty-four to eight inside fifties. The Saints did. Now, does that say more about them or Port? Twenty-four to eight. Mm. Eight total. Yeah. For the game. Let me check that. It was 24 to 8. That's what I read. That seems like nothing. No, yeah, let me check that. When they had when, more, when, 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 had when the dogs more. had when the dogs had 66 and Port had eight. There's no way. No, well, because Port Team wouldn't have had stats. eight because they kicked five goals twelve or five goals. thirteen. Yeah. There's no way. What was it? Do you have the score there? I just can't I can't. Sixty one to fifty six. Where did I get twenty four to eight from? Man, what a <laughs> dumbass. Unbelievable. Eight would have been, be eight would have been unbelievably where, where low. <laughs> Not good. Unreal. I got bets. Luke Jackson for a goal on his return, dollar fifty six. Mm-hmm. Track for a goal, dollar thirty five. Crouch for twenty five plus, dollar mm-hmm. fifty five, and Clary for thirty plus, dollar thirty eight. Don't mind that. I uh, because I put this together at the absolute last second. I just went with my favourites. 
Just went with my favorites. Mm -hmm. You tell me what falls down. Track at any time goal, track 25, right? Jack Steele, 25, mm -hmm. right? Langdon, Brayshaw, Jack Viney, 20 disposals each. Straight down the line. It's only paying about $5. Lang Langdon had the absolute hell tagged out of him on the weekend. So? And about nine disposals, I think. Does that worry you? No. Nah. That would bump it, his odds up. Or if, yeah. I was, if I was an opposition coach watching now, I would have thought, well, that doesn't work. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. See? If he, if he has nine, Angus Brayshaw has 40. Tag Max Gorn. Uh, let's <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Imagine. Jack Higgins, get yeah, over there yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Get over here. Yeah. That's what's happening. Sunday afternoon at Marble Stadium sees the Carlton Blues play the Adelaide Crows in what can surely be the most disappointing end to a round in a long, long, long time. I'll tell you what, I'm going to kick this one off real quick. Um, it was nice to see actually Carlton win a third quarter because we were dumping on them there for a while saying mm -hmm. they just can't win one. They kicked five in a row against the uh, against the Roos and they had seven for the quarter. You'd be disappointed if they didn't beat North Melbourne in the third quarter. We could probably do it. It's just the three of us. <laughs> Imagine. I would actually like to see that. Yeah. North Melbourne, we challenge you. It's doable. At AFL Max, not on a real pitch. Yeah. Neither, yeah. None of us can run that far. Well, AFL Evolution. Losers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Whereas Adelaide, on the other hand, they looked proppy. They were handball happy. It was like they'd just time warped back about 18 months. And it was just, it was one of the worst games I've seen them play in some time. But mm -hmm. you know what? I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's a young team doing young team things. They're going to have games where they beat blokes that they shouldn't. They're going to have games that they lose where you're like, well, where did they lose that? Young team doing young team things. Yep. So we probably should have seen this coming. Having said that, Carlton should bank these four points. The North was a get-right game for them. Mm -hmm. Crows now have, uh, they don't have a week to sit at home and lick their wounds and then play in front of the faithful. They've now got to get on the plane, go over to Marvel. Mm -hmm. And uh, Carlton, well, sky's the limit, you know. Big, big bad, bustling Jack Silvani. He's going to have two fistfuls of himself and ready to box on with whoever Rob, looks twice at Rob him. just gives him one. No, he's a gentleman, Rob. He wouldn't do that. No, nah, I'd do it by accident. Wouldn't no. be Rob. Just in the, just in the um, You've basically yeah. stolen my entire... I, I'm not adding anything I, I, I think Mackay and Kurnow are going to destroy Frampton and Butts. They are going to absolutely tear them up. And that, again, no disrespect to Frampton and Butts, but they're not on the same level, not on the same planet at this point. It's good gone. to see Kurnow have a little bit of form and not be injured. Yep. Like, and mm -hmm. that isn't even a joke. That's yep. that's 100% genuine. Absolutely. Um, their mids were humming. Didn't miss George Hewitt at all which, again, just speaks to the depth of that midfield group. It is absolutely ridiculous. Crow's midfield group is probably their best best position. Yep. Best position group, probably. you would say. Not on the same level. Just, Campbell's. Just not on the same level. Um, their forward line on the weekend, so McHenry, mm -hmm. obviously he went off with concussion late on in the game, so Man big, big rip. Uh, Lockie Gollant, Harry Himmelberg. <clears throat> Harry Himmelberg. Elliot, whatever. Don't same, really matter. Same the, shit, the, the shit of Himmelberg. <laughs> mm. uh, Shane McAdam and Josh Rochelle. And Lockie Murphy combined mm. for two goals. Not good enough. It's not not good enough. enough. We watched it. We watched it's it. It's not was very good. I know the ball wasn't going down there a hell of a lot, but they got to push up the ground to, to get some of the footy in. There was none and of it. And what going about on. a bit of forward pressure? None of it. Lock the ball on. in your 50. There was yep. zero. There was yep. zero forward pressure. Exactly. Um, Crouch, 24 touches, seven of them turnovers. Yeah, horrendous. Oh. That's just bad. That, How many were handballs? Correct. Sam, Sam Berry was probably the Crow's best on the day outside of Laird and Keys because they're just. Always. Was good. Because they're, they're, they're always bad. Sam Barry, eight tackles. That's massive. It's huge. That, that, we that's didn't what, mention Barry. That's he what, was fine. That's what you want to see. That's what you want to see. Blues, I'm going to say 1 to 39, but this if the Crows don't turn up again, this could be very easily 40 plus. I've got Blues 40 plus. I was really impressed with Carlton's link play. Like they just handball forward yep. and kick forward and yep. everyone's pressing. And they love playing at Marvel. They really love playing at Marvel because it suits their game style so mm. well. It's just quick footy. It's going to be a blowout here. I genuinely think that is what's coming. Blue's going to do it. I've got a little bit mm -hmm. or two for you. Sam Walsh, 30. Mm -hmm. Rory Laird, 30. Yep, fair. Patrick Cripps, 30. 30, fair. Yep, Patrick Cripps, anytime goal. Mm -hmm. He's going to have a day. He, he loves he likes, at the moment. And he likes playing the Crows. He does. He likes he playing does. the Crows. So, yeah, Cripper, 30 and an anytime goal. Ben Keys, 25. Doherty had 33 on the weekend. I think you'll get 30. No, <laughs> steady. I think you'll get 25 <laughs> this week. I'm happy with they that. They might have 35. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised. And look, Adam Saad, twenty plus. Yes, that. Do you see this. what that was paying? I've seen this. Yeah, that was paying fat dollar because I've got it there. And he's not. He's not dipped under twenty all year. No. So you put all of 40. those. It, yeah, it was. So you put all of those together. Walsh, Laird, Cripps, Cripps again, Keys, Doherty, Saad, paying fifteen dollars ninety. You put a boost on that. Seventeens. Mm -hmm. uh, the only ones I had to add to that was Adam Chera, twenty five plus. He's finding his feet now after contracting. COVID, $1.62, and, and the human pain spot, human sore spot, Matt Owies, for a goal. I like that. 
the human sore spot as well. Dollar forty-seven. Got anything more to add there, boy? I'm disappointed about the game. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just disappointed us again. That's fair. Fair enough. And that brings us to the end of round eight. Thank you very much, punters, for joining us. Like and subscribe button. Yes, please. Jump on the socials. Armchair Advisors on Facebook. Armchair AD on Instagram. We're putting up all of our bets. Thanks to everyone who's been shouting out to us in the comments and it, that shit, you dickhead. Uh, <laughs> and and just, just to add, you said before if North Melbourne win this weekend. Yeah. Send us through some ideas of what could happen. No, he's got. He's next and week. And we'll post it on the socials. It's Desmina next week if yeah. they win. It's Desmina. Yeah. We're not trivialising anybody. So everyone who watches the show is a North <laughs> Melbourne fan. I oh, will. Uh, <laughs> any anything nut, nuts are off limit. Everything else on limit. I'm um, a, I'm a big fan of that. Thank you very much. We shall see you next week. Take it away, bangs. <laughs>